Welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins and today I'm bringing you a seascape painting tutorial. So I want you to enjoy, relax, imagine smelling the salt air and the ocean breezes on your face. Here we go. Hello artists and visitors to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. Today I'm bringing you a tutorial on painting a seascape. Now I've already started this but you'll see it from the beginning. And I'm going to break it down a little bit for you to give some more specified instruction on certain areas. And also we have a special guest in the studio today. It's Mr. Bob Ross. Sorry to grab you by your Afro, Bob. But uh, my husband recently bought me this. Uh, I, don't, I wasn't sure if it was a joke or, or whatever, but I love it. He is so great. He's going to be a fun little uh, mascot for the studio. He used to say happy painting at the end of his videos too. I didn't know that until not that long ago. So um, if you see him hanging out in the studio during videos, just say, hey, Bob. <laughs> so anyway, enjoy this tutorial. We're going to have fun. Let's get started. Very quickly, because some of you have asked about the Monet Cafe products, like the t-shirt I'm wearing in this video, there are clickable links underneath every video where you can click and check out the products. I have a new t-shirt called, I'm an artist, that means I'm creative, cool, passionate, and a little bit crazy. <laughs> And the Monet Cafe apron is awesome. I have a clickable link in the description section of this video. Here we go. Here's some footage of my palette that I've been using. And for this painting, I've had a lot going on lately. I literally just grabbed this little, uh, I call it my working palette. It's a little box from a previous pastel set that I love the divisions in it. So I just added some foam and made it like a, a nice little, um, palette just for um, keeping pastels for painting I'm working on, but also kind of temporarily storing them. And then I usually have, you know, a pretty decent color arrangement if I just want to start a painting willy nilly, you know. So I already had a lot of these in here. And the ones that I added for this particular painting was some of these um, warm tones, some of leaning more towards orange and pink, and then um, even into some reds and burgundies and uh, some of these brighter colors that I used for the sunset that's in the background. Uh, this is the lightest light that I used for that sun um, and it's gonna be just that middle part that's so bright. Um, and then I have some neutrals here. So basically I have uh, blues and purples, not everything's in perfect order here, and I have greens and kind of some random uh, greens and things here. And I've got my uh, more of my pink type of warm tones, moving more towards yellow and then to neutrals. So, you know, it kind of keeps things a little bit organized while I paint. And uh, I just wanted you guys to get a general idea of what I'm using. I may add a few more. And believe it or not, there will be a little bit of green in this. Actually, there already is. I added some green right down in here. Um, we know warm colors move forward. And uh, in the reference photo, can you see, can you see something that looks maybe a little similar to some greens in here? Uh, not a lot uh, in a lot of other places in the painting, but, but I do see that um, kind of in here. It's a, it's a muted, more neutral green, but uh, I think that's going to bring this water forward. It actually already has. Now getting started from the very beginning of this painting, I'm going to talk about a few products here. I'm showing the ink tense blocks made by Derwent. I use those as a little underpainting. I'll talk about it as I use them, but they're awesome. I had never used it on this piece of type of pastel paper called pastel matte pastel paper. I'm going to show you the pad that I uh, used. There it is. Um, it comes in a pad like this, various sizes. I like it because it has a lot of different colors and I need to order more. <laughs> um, I'm almost out. But this is the charcoal or the darkest color in it. And um, if it looks a little bit dirty, it's because I repurposed it. You can literally wash this stuff off. I had a painting I had done for a demo and I just wanted to use it. I didn't really love the other painting. It was kind of an example. So I brushed off most of the pastel with a stiff brush. Then I literally washed it in my sink and let it dry. Now I was looking to who to give credit for the reference photo and I realized it's my reference photo. It's actually when my husband and I went to St. Pete Beach and oh, I miss the beach. I really need to take a break and go see the ocean and just smell that salt air. Um, but anyway, I'm going to get started here. I'm going to describe a lot of my techniques. You'll get a lot of information in this Monet Cafe 
free video that I provide all of the content on Monet Cafe for free. Um, I will have a little more footage on my Patreon page, um, patreon.com slash Susan Jenkins. A lot of you guys have asked, um, you know, should I become a patron? Will I get more content? It is more content and I have more interaction with you guys. And also I have it geared kind of fun, like around school. We have story time. I have um, PE day, patron education on Fridays. You have homework over the weekend. But on that note, uh, a lot of you, if you're, you know, just really conscious of your budget and everything, you can get so much right here on Monet Cafe. And a lot of people support my Patreon page to get the extra content um, because they're really wanting to, you know, um, get better as artists. But also a lot of people, bless your hearts, just support this channel and it literally has helped make Monet Cafe better. So God bless you patrons who have helped. There's uh, uh, it's five dollars a month i have two levels five dollars and ten dollars a month and really the ten dollars is just because some of you wanted to give more isn't that sweet <laughs> they both have the same um content regardless of which level you pick so anyway that's a little bit to answer some of y'all's questions and uh, i thank every single one of you and my monet cafe family uh, i will always keep providing free content here so on that note my patrons will get a little bit more. I will speed up some of these sections for the Monet Cafe channel, but uh, let me talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. These are the Ink Tense Derwent Ink Tense Pastel, um, I'm sorry, not pastel, uh, Ink Tense Blocks. They're made out of ink. And uh, again, I had never used these on pastel matte paper. I'm really loving this pastel matte paper. It's not quite as gritty as UART sanded paper. I love UART too. As a matter of fact, it's not really gritty at all. It's, it's got almost like a, a velvety feel to it, but the pastels hold to it quite nicely. So if you're not a real fan of super sanded pastel papers, um, then this might be a really good paper for you. And if you don't know what sanded papers are at all, if you're brand new to pastels, it's really just neat that pastels um, get more, you can get more layering effect on papers that are sanded. And uh, UART happens, it's, it's the letter UART happens to be a really great sanded surface. Um, but you can get a lot of great results on unsanded papers too. So that's a common question. Oh, please ignore. I had no idea my hair was all over the place when I, when I started this. I think when I started, it was maybe early in the morning. And sometimes we artists just want to jump up and get to our easel. <laughs> Don't even look in the mirror, right? So um, anyway, you can see what I'm what I did here. This is what you would call an underpainting with local color. The word local color means oh, I'm showing my. I'll come back to local color. This is my new Chinese brush. I have seen these on um, different watercolor channels, and I really love the effects because they hold a lot of water in the brush and a lot of paint. But I'm just using water now. These ink tints ink tints blocks. Um, and the pastel matte paper are water friendly. So you literally, you um, put your, um, I'm just showing how I dipped it in the water and I, I let a little of the water come off. And this was literally the first time I was using this brush. So I realized I need a little more water. But what I was saying is uh, both are water friendly and, um, and work well with water, the paper and the Derwent ink tense blocks. Now I, I will get back to the local color thing, but uh, I noticed with this, again, first time I was doing this, notice how dark this is. Well, it's literally just the water um, on the paper making it look dark. When the paper dries, you do still see some of the um, um, original color uh, that I put down, but it's uh, softer. It's more of a wash because of the water. Uh, would I do the ink tense blocks on pastel matte that is this dark again? Probably not. Um, you're kind of working a little, a little blind. But, but I did like how it made it feel like a wash. You know, like a watercolor wash. You'll see when I dry it. I, I dry it with a blow dryer. So uh, you're getting a lot of uh, first-time things for me from me in this video. But I, I was really happy with this painting. I enjoyed the process a lot. So, um, and that's kind of what art is. It's a lot of fun and experimentation. Don't be too hard on yourself. Make sure you practice 
and don't try to make something so serious right away. Uh, I do lots of practice pieces, way more practice and fun things than I do really serious pieces, um, but especially do that at the beginning of your art career. Now, I was talking about local color. Local color means you're painting the color you see in the scene as opposed to like a an underpainting like this is that is a complementary underpainting. It means you literally use the complement to what's what you see on the color wheel. So I talk about that in a lot of videos. Now you can see how I'm blowing it dry and it actually doesn't look a whole lot different than when I put the pastels, I mean the, the ink tense blocks down, um, but, uh, but it did kind of wash it a little bit. So again, uh, it was an experiment, but it ended up you know, working out well anyway. Um, now you can also do the same thing with underpaintings with pastels. You can do it with watercolor. As long as you're using a water friendly paper to begin with, you can use watercolor for an underpainting, pastels, and literally you can wet the pastels after you do it just like these ink tense blocks. Uh, you can use water, you can use alcohol. I have so many videos talking about the different um, varieties and techniques that you can use. All right, now I'm actually beginning painting. This, what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of just um, solidifying my composition a little bit. Uh, I didn't, notice I didn't really do any drawing or anything. I literally just used the sides of the Derwent ink tense blocks to kind of block in the shapes of things. And now I'm getting a little bit more specific as to where things are. What I'm doing, I'm making some little notes to myself. Uh, I'm not going to do a super specific drawing, but I'm looking at the waves and using this little, the pastel I have here is called a new pastel, NU pastel made by Prismacolor. I love these. They're great. Um, they're not the softies that uh, always get so much um, fanfare and attention, uh, but they are really, I use them a lot for sketching, even um, for blending later in the painting. Um, so the new pastels are, are really great, harder pastels. That's why they're good for sketching. sketching. They're a little bit harder, still considered a soft pastel, but they're a little bit harder than um, you know a lot of the other soft pastel varieties. Um, and again, these are my, my sketching notes um, and once I get these in, then I can kind of start painting. So I'm going to speed up the section just a little bit, but I'm going to keep talking to you guys and um, still getting in some sketches. I think I do, um, I did speed up the section where I add a little bit of uh, a pretty like purple violet down here at the bottom right now. Um, that actually um, really gives that neat a feeling of wet sand. And I really want to get my values right in this. So you see me using a little value scale here that I'll talk about in a minute. And uh, now I'm going to slow it down a little bit again. But uh, anyway, I have the reference photo available where you guys can see it on the iPad right here. But just so you know, that's another thing that often uh, I have available on the Patreon pages. A lot of times in these videos here on Monet Cafe, I'll, I'll put the reference photo up where you can see it. But you can see it pretty good here uh, next to me. Uh, but again, my Patreon page, I often provide the reference photo for my patrons to, uh, to be able to use um, and to reference while they're painting if they try to recreate this painting. Um, we also on the Patreon page have a, a homework album where my patrons turn in their assignments and there's a monthly drawing and a prize, uh, a, a gift card for some art supplies um, for whoever wins the drawing and your chances are better the more homework you do and, and lessons you submit. But every pa patron also has a chance to win. I have two drawings each month and patrons who don't even do any painting at all have a chance to win as well. So, so anyway, that's another fun thing that we do. Now I'm getting in values right now. You saw me a minute ago just using my little value finder. I don't often use it um, after you're painting a while. You don't need to refer to it as much, but sometimes in a painting like this, I just want to be accurate. It's going to be real Really, well, I was going to say really all about value with this painting, but it's really all about value with every painting. Value is just the difference between lights and darks, and I'm going to talk about that again in a second. But right now, I want to share with you, I discovered that this little chamois cloth, you know, that you dry your cars with or whatever, um, I just bought a big sheet of it at the dollar store. It works great on pastel mat, and because I want this certain things in this painting to look um, soft, especially the sand that is, um, 
um, kind of that thin, I should say the water and the sand, that little thin layer of water that um, comes over the sand when the waves um, come forward and then uh, recede. I love that. And it really just has this flat, very um, glistening look to it. So I thought that chamois cloth, uh, using it to blend in certain areas would be nice. Um, so anyway, I'm still working on value. Again, back to value being so important. I knew I didn't have that sand dark enough in the foreground. So again, using the chamois cloth. I don't like to over blend, but if I can get um, the effect that I want through blending, um, I like to go ahead and get that done early on and uh, then layer on top of that. And just so you know, I have a really in-depth video tutorial on value. I think it's like the featured video. Uh, once you're a subscriber, I think it's at the top of the page. Now I'm getting in those lights. You know, I've been focusing on some of the darker values. Now I want to create the lightest value. So I have a range. I kind of know where I'm at when I get my darks and my lights in. And you're also going to see me, I've sped this up just a little bit. Okay. So you can still see what I'm doing, but um, I'm making those notes um, at, or not notes, those marks at the bottom with the pastel so you can kind of get an idea of the colors and the values that I'm using. Um, I think that I think that helps you guys when you can kind of see more um, about my color choices. And once again, please ignore this crazy hair. I actually, I think I remember now of why it was crazy. I've been um, uh, running on the treadmill for two miles each day um, since the gyms are closed. And I'm actually working out more now than I did when the gyms were open. I, I guess I just feel like I, I need to get out there and do something. So uh, sometimes when I'm painting, I have really literally just finished that. And I don't even think to go <laughs> and fix my hair. So sorry for that. Um, so now I'm going to zoom in a little bit more here and talk a little bit more about this. Now I want to let you know, um, this is the end of the um, slower content for Monet Cafe. My patrons are going to get more voice um, commentary and uh, but from here forward on the Monet Cafe channel I'm going to speed it up just a bit and uh, give you guys some music to listen to but uh, I hope you've gotten a lot of good commentary uh, already and um, that you will uh, try this you know um, and also too if you haven't become a member of the Facebook group for Monet Cafe. It's Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook. You can get so many artists helping you out. It's a great community. There are artists of every level. And, you know, I'm I'm not even commenting that much anymore because there's so many other artists on there that are helping each other out. And because uh, I'm spending more time with my patrons on my Patreon page, but that's another great free resource for you guys. So Monet Cafe, I love this YouTube channel. I love you guys. If you're brand new, hang in there. It all gets better the more you practice. So whether you are Monet Cafe subscriber or my patron, keep watching. And please like this video and subscribe to this channel. I always forget to say that. Feel free to leave a comment. I love it when you leave comments. I love to try to answer your questions. And uh, also stay tuned to the end of the video. That helps my YouTube ranking. And uh, also you learn a lot by watching to the end. All right, guys, enjoy this to some nice music and do stay tuned. I have a neat invention I'm gonna share with you.
Oh, I wanted to show you guys this little invention my, I made. I literally took a new pastel and I taped it to the end of a long handle paintbrush. I was talking there, but I'll, I decided to do a voiceover. And I'm, I'm showing there how sometimes I can't see that good when I'm up so close. So I love how when you have a long handle paintbrush, you can literally get back from the painting and you can get more gestural strokes because your grip is looser. It's not so tight up on the pastel. I hope that makes sense there. It just has a nice gestural, loose, artistic feel. So, hey, you might want to try it. I, I really liked it. I'll definitely do that again. Of course, you can't do that with all of your pastels, but um, especially the big, chunky Terry Ludwig. So I thought I'd show you guys my little invention. And here I think it was the beginning of a new day. So I'm coming in with my cup of coffee, getting ready to start painting. And I I actually was showing um, my little Monet Cafe uh, Earth Colors bracelet. I know some of you guys have gotten them. I love it. I literally am not just sharing this just to sell bracelets. I love smelling essential oils while I paint. And when you have it right there on your hand, the little lava rocks on this bracelet, the, the little rocks look like pastels. They literally just smell so good when you apply the essential oil. So anyway, I'm just sharing that. I always have a clickable link at the uh, in the description section of each video to be able to buy the bracelets. So anyway, these are so cool. I love them. The Earth Colors. There's the Artist Series as well, but these are the Earth Colors bracelets. I hope you guys enjoyed that and learned something, both Monet Cafe, Art Family, and my Patreon family. It always blesses me to think I may be helping someone with their own artistic aspirations and goals. So, happy painting, everyone.